Thank you, uh, Toby. Thank you very much. Are you going to be sharing my uh, presentation? Um, if you could please share it, Mr. President. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, a, a, very, a very good evening to our honored guest, uh, the Gauteng MEC for Infrastructure Development and uh, Property Management, Ms. Tasneem uh, Motara, uh, the Chair of SISI uh, Joburg Branch, uh, Zinatpur, the Chair of the uh, SISI Young Members Panel, uh, Michael Mishlanga, and uh, to our fellow SISI members and all those who have joined us uh, this evening uh, for this 2021 Women in Hard Hats uh, event. I must sincerely thank uh, the uh, Joburg Branch as well as the uh, YMP for inviting me uh, this evening and in honoring uh, the women who are assets in engineering and the civil engineering profession. So, um, yeah, I find this uh, event uh, quite befitting uh, in that it's uh, August and we once again celebrate uh, Women's Month. And uh, also uh, we pay tribute to those brave uh, women on the 9th of August, 1956, who marched uh, to the union buildings um, against the extension of the past laws to women. Uh, it's very befitting. It's also, I would also like to pay special tribute to all the women out there uh, in terms of uh, what they've achieved uh, thus far. And despite uh, facing all the uh, barriers that they've had to face uh, within their uh, careers or within their lives, uh, the immense contribution is, is really appreciated. And, uh, you know, we basically must uh, acknowledge the considerable uh, uh, achievements uh, that they have made. Uh, Furthermore, I think uh, the, the the theme uh, for Women's Month is the year of uh, uh, Charlotte Charlotte Mania Makeke. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, looking at uh, uh, realizing women's uh, rights, and I'm also happy to say that it is uh, you know partly uh, my presidential theme for 2021 is based on uh, gender inclusivity. So I, I feel honored uh, to be here this evening to discuss and touch to basically touch more on basic on, on what needs to be done uh, within our profession or even in, in the industry. Uh, you know, we also need to look at how we as professionals in the industry can advocate for ensuring that uh, we work towards creating a more gender inclusive environment. Because, you know, um, engineering uh, contributes to shaping the world. You know, uh, we basically want to make our planet uh, much more safer, uh, more innovative, and uh, if done correctly, so we can also have a much more healthier place to live in. But uh, the engineering is, is one of the most uh, male-dominated uh, uh, fields uh, of STEM. And as uh, the MEC did mention, you know, uh, it, it's also one of the most uh, male-dominated professions globally, if you, if you even uh, think about it, with women making only a fraction of the engineering workforce of, of today. So from that perspective, you know, we really got to look at uh, the slow pace of uh, uh, transformation within the industry. And, uh, you know, in terms of inclusivity, uh, our pre profession really needs to look at how we have moved thus far. And although we've been uh, uh, many years into uh, democracy, uh, we find that uh, the slow pace of transformation uh, has basically uh, limited the capacity of effectively meeting our societal needs. Uh, it has limited our progress and, is, uh, you know, through um, uh, basically looking at the various aspects of how we uh, uh, have a balance in terms of our, our work environment, our uh, whether it be in public or, or, or uh, private sector. Uh, we do acknowledge, I do acknowledge that there has been a limited progress uh, through the awareness, uh, other education policies, and even the legislation. But you know, uh, more efforts are, are needed to fully achieve an inclusive and, and uh, the equi uh, and equitable practices uh, within uh, our profession. You know, uh, this we also want to ensure uh, true representation and also to yield fair societal results from the work that we do. And to be quite honest with you, uh, we uh, basically do a lot that uplifts the lives and livelihoods of millions of individuals within the country or, uh, or worldwide. Uh, so basically, you know, we, we need to ensure that we have that uh, representativity. Uh, another thing that's very, very important and which a lot of us uh, are not mindful of is that uh, inclusivity is about all of us in engineering and not just uh, uh, the woman, and I know um, I, I could say that I'm, I'm a very proud feminist uh, when it comes to this, uh, you know, uh, in terms of looking at how we can ensure that we have a very conducive environment in which we live in. Another aspect that's very, very important, and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the chair of the uh, Joburg branch will probably agree with me, is that the gender inclusivity uh, and diversity is also crucial to the bottom line, you know. 
there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of benefits that uh, basically come out of it. And if you look at it, some of it being the increased innovation, you have a better productivity. And you might even find that we find more success that can be achieved when we have much more uh, inclusive and diverse teams uh, within uh, within our projects, within our organizations, uh, and, and various um, structures that we are in. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, companies moving forward in terms of inclusivity and diversity, you know, there's a lot of companies that have comprehensive inclusivity and diversity statements, be it on social media, be it on their uh, company web websites. But, uh, you know, for some, um, we find that it's just on paper. You have, a, you have management just talk about it, but never gets translated into action. You know, and uh, what's very, very important that we need to understand is that, you know, um, company statements and visions uh, don't just turn into actions on their own. We need more transformational leadership. And that is what will happen. That is what will assist us in making our, our diversity and inclusivity happen at a much a more uh, a faster rate. You know, uh, for many organizations, uh, there must be a firm belief in that uh, diversity and inclusivity is a key business driver uh, that which must obviously must be woven uh, into the culture of that organization. You know, and uh, it's very important that for for CEOs as well as the captains of, of industry, uh, we need to uh, promote and maintain a a barrier-free, uh, non-biased recruitment and retention process, because normally it happens, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, pursuing uh, success within an organization. This is also a very uh, is essential uh, component. You know, we, the world has a, a long history of uh, exploitation and uh, exclusion, and uh, this has led to a lot of uh, lack of generational wealth that that is missing uh, within the generation that we feel that that, that we basically. Uh, live in right now, and uh, it's important that for us to uh, to dismantle this negative negative bias, to bring a lot of more positivity in terms of how gender inclusivity um, uh, can bring to an, uh, bring to organizations, can add value to organizations, and more so uh, it it uh, uplifts uh, individuals, it creates more wealth, it creates more a positive uh, value uh, to uh, to our livelihoods and, and and our lives. So uh, from that perspective. If you look at uh, your your uh, 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 company's responsibilities, and uh, if you uh, moving forward in terms of the uh, diversity inclusivity, it, you know it's some some may say that it's good or it's uh, uh, preferable if uh, companies publish their diversity and inclusivity CVs, and this would also help when in, in individuals can decide whether they want to be a part of their organizations or even if looking at the chances of achieving leadership positions within the organizations whether there is a glass ceiling that they will uh, basically uh, be uh, uh, held down and also looking at how the effect that uh, these uh, organizations move forward in employing uh, individuals of diverse and inclusive cultures. So that is a very um, uh, critical aspect that we need to look at. But um, one of the uh, other critical aspects is the aspect of the hypocrisy or even the aspect of uh, cognitive uh, dissonance and where you have individuals uh, really, you know, not really looking at, um, not really believing in uh, what they're saying. And uh, this is, th th this is the, the, the difficult part is that you, know, you have a lot of CEOs or, or um, individuals in the organizations who don't really believe in their, in their statements uh, that, that they put out there. We actually need to change that approach. You know, we need individuals, we need leaders uh, who truly believe in addressing the issues of DNI. Uh, sorry, uh, DNI, yeah. And we need to, them to inspire their followers who intend will convert them to be believers and these believers become leaders uh, in DNI as well. So that is very important where we need to look at. Uh, you know, it has to be a top-down approach uh, with a company-wide buy-in so that it becomes entrenched uh, within the uh, company's culture as well as, as well as the DNA. So... Um, from uh, a retention of uh, women in in um, uh, in engineering, you know, it, it's no secret, you know, that in South Africa, um, it is a fact that the gen gender disparity is playing a role in um, South Africa's scarcity of competent competent engineers. Uh, you know, uh, we constantly uh, see that more men um, enter uh, the South African engineering sector uh, than women, but it, in the recent past, there has been 
uh, an increase in that number. But uh, thus far, I, I don't think that uh, there is uh, enough uh, in the short term that would make it uh, equitable in terms of uh, what we want to achieve in terms of our inclusivity or gender targets, uh, either by government or even any uh, any organization. So it's basically, uh, you know, we basically need to look at the various aspects of how we look at the retention of women engineers in our profession. Because we find that, and from research that I've completed for my master's, is that uh, not enough is being done uh, to encourage uh, uh, the retention of, of, of women in, in our engineering sector uh, uh, um, as a whole, because um, a lot of them feel very isolated, undervalued, and at times the only option that they have is to actually leave the profession, and which is quite sad. And XS, uh, uh, the recent uh, uh, study by XS has, pro uh, has proven that as well. That about seventy-five percent of our of our engineers leave the leave the sector. You know, uh, one of the major aspects that I from from what I've done uh, that has come through from my research is that there's a lack of cons uh, concern by employers when it comes to the work-life balance uh, of women, you know, uh, and unfortunately, uh, that is a, a critical aspect uh, when, you, when you understand that uh, the women are normally the primary uh, caregivers in, 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 their, in their households, you know. Uh, now, especially uh, with the pandemic, uh, where the situation has brought about major changes in the, uh, the way we work, I certainly hope that the powers that be uh, uh, will be able to acknowledge uh, that women can take care of their families and also in, uh, excel uh, in the duties uh, that they perform. And all of this while still working and adapting uh, to the new normal uh, in the middle of uh, an ex in, uh, a dangerous pandemic. So from that perspective, you know, it's, it's absolutely amazing what has been achieved, uh, how women have really overcome all these negative uh, bias and have basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, proven to many of us and proven to the sector, proven to the industry that they are really worthy competitors within the, 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 the workspace. So, you know, um, one, of the, one of the very uh, critical aspects that I, that I look at is, is, is the, 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 the lack of female engineers as role models within our, within our um, profession. And, you know, there's a saying that uh, you can't be uh, what you can't see. And you know, for that, it just leads us to believe that uh, that more needs to be done to to uh, to attract more female engineers, or to have more female engineers to act as role models uh, to, for the young women who are currently in the profession, or for those who want to be in the in the profession. You know, and uh, basically, we need to know ensure that all our members in, or members of organizations or or companies, uh, uh, we must do more to promote uh, the benefits that can be achieved by ensuring that uh, there's an equal uh, representation of women um, in, in, the, in the various fields that we are, that we are in. Uh, we must also acknowledge uh, that, that women are assets uh, in our industry. Uh, and uh, please don't get me wrong, uh, I do acknowledge that the men have uh, contributed immensely uh, to our uh, profession, but you know, for far too long, uh, women have not got the full recognition uh, that, they, uh, that they have deserved for their contributions and uh, that they have made to the provision, right? But um, you know, I could guarantee, I could tell you that as president of SIC, uh, I'm confident that SIC will continue to advocate for gender inclusivity in our pro uh, profession. We'll uh, continue to ensure that all women are recognized for their contribution that they make, and more so uh, that they also treated with the respect and dignity that they deserve, and that their path uh, to success and leadership is is fully supported. So, um, in conclusion, um, my fellow guests, uh, uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity uh, to wish all our, our, our wonderful and talented uh, uh, women out there, wonderful uh, uh, and engaging Women's Month. Uh, let's just take time uh, to uh, honor the special women in our lives, as well as our colleagues, and more importantly, um, all those who have led the struggle for women's rights and equality, and who continue to do so uh, on a daily basis. Uh, it must be emphasized that our that your efforts uh, have laid the foundation uh, for the achievements of so many of our women engineers of today, and it is certainly appreciated. Uh, finally, uh, to my audience, uh, I just uh, want to uh, leave you with the, with the last sort of comment, and for you to remember that uh, gender inclusivity is not only about being accepted, it is also about being respected. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good evening. Thank you.